This is a GCSE video on electric motors. In the last video, we looked at electromotive force, which was a force experienced by an electron as it moves around a circuit being forced by a magnet. So it was when we create electricity by moving a magnet inside a coil of wire. Now that's how we generate electricity, but lots of things also use electricity to make movement of some kind, and that is called an electric motor. Now the first thing that you need to know about that is that when current travels through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around that wire. So if we have a wire running that way, sort of into the page a little bit, that's going to create a magnetic field around the wire. So the field is going around. Now that's very difficult to draw on a piece of paper. So what we do, instead of trying to draw it in three dimensions, we draw a cross section of a wire. And a cross section means if you took a wire and cut it in half and then looked at the end. So we draw a cross section of a wire. Now, the way that we indicate which direction current is traveling, because we can't draw an arrow into the page or out of the page, is with an X or a dot. An X means the current is going away from you, and a dot means the current is coming towards you. A useful way of remembering that is if you imagine an arrow, the current as a, an arrow fired by a bow and arrow. And if you looked at this end, all you'd see is one dot, like the, if, if, that, if you put a piece of paper just touching there, the only thing that would touch is one dot. And here, the end of th this arrow, if you put that on a piece of paper, it would show a cross. So a dot on a wire, on a cross section of a wire, means the current is coming out at the page. A cross means the current is going into the page. So if we take a wire coming out of the page like this, we can use our right hand, it's important to use your right hand, to decide which way the current is travelling. Sorry, which way the magnetic field created by the current. So if you point your thumb in the direction of the current, so in this case that's out of the page, and bend your fingers like that, that is the direction of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is going around the wire like that. So we would draw the magnetic field either like that, or sometimes in an exam, you might be presented with a compass and it says which way is the needle pointing. So this compass, it will be pointing here, this compass, it will be pointing here, this compass, it will be pointing here, and this compass, it will be pointing there. The other way round, if we have a wire going into the page, our thumb points in the direction of the current into the page. You can see that doing the same rule with our right hand means the magnetic field is now going the opposite direction. And so if we were to use a small compass, that would go up, that would go down, that would go right, and that would go left. So there you have two different examples of how you can draw a magnetic field around a wire. And remember, all wires, when they're carrying current, create magnetic fields. Now we can go a step further than that, and we can look at a coil of wire as well. So if we take a coil of wire, again, quite difficult to draw in two dimensions, but what we can try and do is have, if we put an, a core in the middle of it, an iron core, then we can have the wire coming round, 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 and down. So, 
We've got an iron core in the middle and we've got a coil of wire here. Now this wire is also going to create a magnetic field and actually the shape of the magnetic field created by a coil of wire is exactly the same as a bar magnet. Now the bar magnet is the type of magnet with the red and the blue that we looked at in the last video and so we can work out which end is north and which end is south based on which direction the coil is turning. So if you imagine taking this coil and looking at this end, standing over here and looking at this end, then you would see that the coil is going round in that direction. And if the coil is going round in that direction, that means that it's a south pole. You can see the arrows are pointing in the same clockwise direction. So south is clockwise. And on this side, if you looked at this end of it, you would see that actually the coil is coming in the opposite direction. Like that. And this is the north. You can see if you draw an N with the arrows on the end of the N, that is going in an anti-clockwise direction. So if the coil is twisting in an anti-clockwise direction, that's the North Pole. And if the coil is twisting in a clockwise direction, that's the South Pole. And so we could then draw our field lines. Remember, everything always goes from North to South. So the magnetic field around this bar magnet would look something like this. Now remember, a bar magnet has the same pattern of a magnetic field as a coil of wire. Now something interesting happens when you put that wire conducting electricity. Remember, when a wire conducts electricity, it creates a magnetic field around it. And if we put that wire in an existing magnetic field, then it experiences a force. Now that's the same force as if you move two magnets together then you can see that this one on the left is experiencing a force. That force is moving the magnet. I'm not touching the magnet, it's the magnetic fields interacting. So this magnet has a magnetic field, this magnet has a magnetic field, and when two magnetic fields come together, they interact and they create a force. So that force is either repulsive, repelling like this, or it's attractive, attracts like this, but either way, as a force. So if we have our magnets here and then we have a wire going through those magnets and that wire is conducting electricity, let's say that that's positive and that's negative, then this wire is creating a magnetic field and there is a magnetic field from our magnets and so those two magnetic fields are going to interact and create a force. Now we can work out what direction that force is in using a very simple rule. That rule is called the left hand rule, it's Fleming's left hand rule. And to do it you need your left hand obviously and you need to make an L shape at 90 degrees with your first finger and your second finger. And then you need to point your thumb vertically upwards so your thumb and your first finger make a right angle as well. So you have this kind of shape. Now, each one of your fingers represents a different thing, and your first finger is the magnetic field. First finger, field. So you point that from north to south, so that way. The second finger is current. Second finger, current. So the current goes from positive to negative, so in this case, that's coming that's kind of down out of the page like that. So in this case, the thumb is the movement. So in this case, the movement is going to be upwards. Now let's try that again using some of the symbols that we've just learned. So if we have a magnet here, let's say a North Pole and a South Pole. And then we have a wire that looks like this. 
see if you can tell me which direction that force is acting. So using our left hand rule, we know that our first finger is the magnetic field, which goes from north to south, that way. Second finger is current, that X means it's going into the page, so current is going like that. And our thumb is pointing in the direction of the force, downwards. Now you can reverse the direction of that force if you swap the magnets around, swap the direction of the magnetic field. You can reverse the current, if you, if you have the current coming out of the page instead, the force will be in the opposite direction. So either one of those will produce the opposite force if you swap the magnetic field or swap the current. Now this motor effect is used in every single electric motor. So an electric motor is something that converts electricity into kinetic energy. And the way that we do that is we have a magnet. And then we put a coil of wire inside that magnetic field. And that coil of wire, just like our AC generator, that coil of wire is connected to a circuit. And this time, instead of generating the electricity, it's using the electricity. So if we put a plus and a minus there, then that coil now has electricity flowing through it. So if we have a plus and a minus, we can use our left hand rule to work out what's going to happen to the, each side of that coil. So for the cables running this way, it's going from positive to negative, so second finger current, so current is going like that into the page. First finger field, which is north to south, so first finger field, second finger current, like that. And so the movement for that one on the left is going to be downwards. The current is going into the page, the field is going that way, movement is downwards. For this one on the right hand side, the current is now coming back this way, so the f your first finger field stays in the same way, but the current is now coming out of the page. Movement is upwards. So you can see that this coil is going to start to spin around, like this. And that turning motion is how an electric motor works. But this wire wants to go up and this wire wants to go down. If they do so, then once this one gets to the top, it's got nowhere further to go, and once this one gets to the bottom, it's got nowhere further to go. So they would stay there. So what we need to do is we need to reverse that current. If this is a direct current, then we need something called a split ring commutator. And a split ring commutator A split ring commutator travels with the coil and when it gets when this wire gets to the top and this wire gets to the bottom there's a little gap and the current this positive connection suddenly switches to being to, in contact with this side so the current reverse the current through the coil reverses and then when it gets all the way around again the current reverses again and again and again and again and again and again so if you have a direct current and you want to use an electric motor, you need a split ring commutator because then the current keeps reversing. So the direction of the force on this one keeps reversing. So it goes up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. And this one goes down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up. And so the motor keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. Now with an AC motor, this is for a DC motor, but with an AC motor, you don't need a split ring commutator because an AC motor runs on alternating current and the current is already changing backwards and forwards, positive, negative, po positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So you don't need the split ring commutator, you just need a slip ring like we had in the last video. 
So DC motor needs a split ring commutator, and AC motor doesn't because the current is already reversing, and that's the job of the split ring commutator. This may sound confusing at the moment, but I promise that the more practice that you do, the easier it will get. Practice with your left hand rule, practice with your right hand rule for current for magnetic field around a wire, and practice with motor questions.